There are a few things that need considering when working as a composer on the same score, which will become clear throughout the documentary. But one of the key aspects is a well-organized administrative workflow. For that reason, we set up a folder structure for all our files and prepared a so-called cue sheet to keep an overview of our progress. So we're going to look at the spotting notes and cue sheet, or at least here, the first half, uh, what we're working with at the moment. Uh, this is Christian's template, so again, he's very experienced, he knows what there is needed in order to have a, a good workflow and also to create a cue sheet after, which is hugely important because that will generate your money and royalties. So here we've got the cue number, uh, important, correct naming and numbering. So we're always talking about the same thing, the cue name, then the spotting notes, which are copied in from the Word document, from the notes taken on the Skype session with the director. Then we're three composers. So we want to know who is kind of responsible for which cue. Then the production notes, very important, uh, which stage your writing and your cue is in. So here, for example, I've sent one version on the 9th of August and this was approved by David. So it, it's, it turns green. I like working with colouring as well. So here, for example, red meaning obviously something is not right. So it's still a work in process. Prepare it in Pro Tools for the recording and then here the recording session. And here this one is being used for afterwards, which I'm not going to go into detail yet, even if it's a smaller project. And again, keep track with the filing as well. While we're talking about this, I can just go into my filing here. This is my Spitfire folder here. Then I've got the haunting project. Then I've got cues, the haunting logic files. And here I've got the cues I'm working on. The green ones are approved. I'm going to leave them there because I need to go in there for the orchestration, etc. If I have old ones, I'm going to drop them in here so it doesn't get too messy in my main folder here. Same with the WAFs. Then I've got my master session. I've ex I'm explaining this in, in a quick tip, I believe, how it works. So the film and the master session is a Pro Tools session. So I import the WAFs into this session. And then I bounce out the QuickTime files into another folder. And these ones I'm uploading into Google Drive to share with David, the director, and to get uh, his feedback. And then here I've got another one uh, called Documentary. This is what I'm doing here. So that needs to live on a separate folder as well. Otherwise it gets too messy. So we've got Christian just sent through his uh, triple felt piano, which sounds really, really cool. I'm going to try and build the, the mini steel pan myself. Um, into an e EXS uh, instrument. I will be writing uh, the first uh, cue. I'm going to go for the longest kind of five minute monster cue. So enough talking for now and um, I'll see you later. Another aspect that shouldn't be underestimated is communication between the composers. Luckily, we are writing under the same roof, which makes it easy to check in on each other's progress, match our sounds, review our cues, or simply for moral support. What are you up to, how am I? Sorting out the coffee machine. Nice. Now that we're all set up and Oli has finished working on the steel drum, we can finally start writing the music for the film, with only two days left to hand in the first few cues to the director. Hi there, it's now uh, the 7th of August in the evening. I had a uh, very successful day. I was making a new instrument on EXS and uh, just going to play a little bit of how it sounds. Uh, I'm happy how it sounds. So uh, with, with, a, with a tea towel on top of it. And it sounds a tiny bit out of tune, but I really like that because it's something that kind of, it makes you a little bit uncomfortable. And layering it with Christian's uh, triple felt piano, which uh, he, he uh, sampled for this project. It adds a little bit of depth to the to the felt piano and, and then a slightly uh, another color in in the attack in the, in, in the percussive kind of aspect of it. So this is the muted one. Then I've made the mini steel drum uh, uh, unmuted. So with that tea towel. It's quite nice there. Then we've got some uh, steel drum rolls. The, these ones I really really like. So they make you feel really uncomfortable if you layer them up, so a chord. Oh, I love 
that sound really cool. Uh, I'm gonna try and pull stretch it as well, maybe for, for some like uh, quite high high pads uh, for some tension. So I literally just lay this down playing with the felt piano and the mini steel drum for this uh, first cue I'm writing. It's cue uh, 1M16 and if we have a quick look what, uh, what's here on the, on the cue sheet. So the director's note is um, time code uh, have, a, have a sting on a scary moment uh, then the sting tells out and moves into the pathos music 135-37 after uh, the, the girl says let's go back to bed uh, then the father and daughter kind of theme starts in the I say here in brackets what the director says two broken individuals being thrown together quite sad so this is kind of their theme their bonding theme you know but it's still they're both lost and and it's kind of something a little bit unsettling so I've just done this before before I turned on the camera and I thought I'd share it with you um, so we're kind of half an hour into the film and uh, the guy, uh, the father, has the first time, he has, I think it's the first time, he's, he's left the bed and there's a kind of a typical horror movie kind of scene where um, he's, there he is behind the door, still, <laughs> still kind of scares me, you all know it. Um, and then he puts him back to bed. Yeah. And the director once again wants something uh, kind of comforting, it was, he wants kind of the bonding between father and daughter, yet still they're lost. I do imagine some, some strings, I think, on top, now I'm listening to it. And then it eases out. The ostinato on the steel drum kind of fades out. What does she want? And then mood changes, he sees, he sees the ghost. Low drone or something, I'm saying, then tension. Maybe a sting here when, it, when, it's, uh, when the camera cuts to the door. Uh, yeah, something, something like that. This is the very first cue, so here we are trying to establish the overall musical mood of the film and one of the main themes, keeping in mind all the spotting notes from the director. This is also the first time he will have heard them, so this cue lends itself nicely to show them off. The earlier you get the sounds and main themes approved, the better, even if that means working into the night. So, uh, third day of actual writing. Um, this morning I was... Uh, ch checking out the tambora box the guys were editing so I've got the first instrument build and it sounds really really cool um, kind of creepy what we were looking for I'm not sure whether you can hear it through this mic so these are the bowed kind of sounds of the tambora box really cool And I've got some muted plucks. So they're going to be very useful. With the finished tempora box, Oli continues working on the first cue. When he showed me the track, however, I didn't feel it hit the right mood. And with his fresh pair of ears, neither the T. Yeah, I'm just listening to it again and I don't like it at all. It's not, it's not the right mood. Let's have a quick listen.
I like the sounds I've got here in the end towards to to build up the tension. But before it sounds a little bit like I don't know, like a sad goodbye or something, like two lovers um, saying goodbye to each other and they, they won't be able to see each other for a long time anymore. It just doesn't fit exactly the right mood. Uh, let's have a listen to the second one. I'm gonna what I'm gonna do here is maybe I'm gonna leave it out. Um, this father-daughter theme at a minute, or I'm gonna try something else, maybe a bit more ominous. Not as sad, because they're not really sad. They should be lost and uh, kind of, I, I feel there's not, yeah, there's not enough tension or it's just not the right tone. I'm not happy about this first one because there's a lot of like tension and oh, is the ghost behind the next corner or not? Um, but I'm trying to do the tension in different variations. So here I'm trying the steel drum muted. A little bit of low strings. Now we've got a tambora box. I think I'm, I might add a little bit of weird droney stuff on the bottom. So these are quite cool, the violin scraps. And then here flat tango on the bottom. And here she stops and I'm kind of preparing for the for the big scare because she sees something that's covered with with a bed sheet or a towel that looks like it could be the ghost. That's where she saw it, that's the scare. Now she goes closer to it to check it out what it is, so I bring in the colenio to kind of represent her nerves a bit. It's probably going to double up with some muted plucks of the tampura box. Etc, etc. So I'm half happy, half not with this cue. It's, it's a very long cue and um, the most difficult thing will be to find this theme for father and daughter. We've got roughly one hour left until we got to send stuff to David, the director, and I'm just gonna check on Homai. So how's it going? It didn't feel as though we had much to present close to the deadline, but sometime close to midnight, we ended up sending over two of my cues and one of Ollie's, including a new father-daughter theme. Let's see what the director has to say about them. Next up, reviews. 